In this video, we will build an ASCII art generator in C. In the process, we will learn about convolutions in image processing and clustering. At the end of the video, you should have a program that can take an image and generate an ASCII art equivalent like this. Without further ado, let's dive in. ASCII art is a design made using only the 95 printable ASCII characters defined in the ASCII standard. It involves arranging the characters in intricate and innovative ways to form images. For example, this is the ASCII art of a fish. In order to make an ASCII art generator, we need to identify the features of an image. Taking the fish example, we need to find the outline of the fish to fill with characters and leave the body blank. As humans, this is a relatively easy task to do. But for computers that deal in zeros and ones, this is rather difficult. This is where we will turn to math. A convolution is an operation defined in math that involves reversing functions and infinite integrals. Well, we will not focus on all of that here. Rather, we will discuss convolutions for image processing. Let's start with this simple case. We have a 3x3 three three grid with zeros and ones, where the zeros represent empty cells and the ones represent lines. We want to detect these lines. To do that, Let's take this one by one cell, which we'll call a kernel, with a value of 1, and slide it through every cell in the grid. At each grid cell, we will multiply its value with the kernel. If the product now is 1, then it means that the cell has a line. If it's 0, then it means the cell is empty. Thus, we can detect the lines in the image. Let's expand this to a bigger example. Let's take this 4 by 4 grid of zeros and ones representing an image and this 3 by 3 kernel. If we now slide the kernel around the grid, ensuring that the center of the kernel touches every cell and carry out the multiplication process, with an added addition step to sum all the cell-wise products, we'll get these values. Do you notice that the cells with the maximum values are the same cells with a plus sign? Let's look at our kernel again. Do you notice that it is in the shape of a plus sign? This way, by smartly choosing our kernel, we can use convolutions to detect certain patterns in our images. While this is not the most rigorous definition of a convolution, it is sufficient for our project. The core idea is that, given an image, we want to find the closest ASCII character that matches each part of the image and print that character. So, if a region most closely resembles a plus sign in our image, we want to print a plus sign there. We'll dive deeper into the implementation details in the code section. Using convolutions, we can detect the features in our image. However, what good is simply printing out all the characters in the right shape? We also want to print them in color, right? Well, this leads to the problem of color detection. For this project, we're going to keep things simple, and we're going to use a basic frequency counting method to detect the dominant color in a segment of the image. We will iterate through each pixel in the segment and increment its frequency by one. At the end, we will find the most frequent color in the segment and print the ASCII character in that color. A small modification we will make here is that, instead of using RGB values for each pixel, ranging from 0 to 255, we will compress it to be 0 to 63. This way, we can avoid counting colors that are very nearly the same as different. For example, 200 and 200 are very similar, and we don't want to count them as different colors. Now that we've covered the core concepts involved in the implementation, let's walk through it. I wrote this generator with a friend of mine, so I let him explain the code. This is our primary data set for the project. It's a array of two-dimensional arrays. Each array represents a character. For example, this one represents the letter A because the pixels that correspond to where you would draw for an A are set to 255 while the others are set to zero. We use this data set to decide which character best matches a given part of the image. In artski.h, which is our main header file for the project, we define a few different structs. The first one is a BMP header struct, which maintains some information about the BMP file, which we read from. There's also a BMP image struct, which has a BMP header, as well as an array to some pixel data. We decided to use BMP images because it's very easy to extract the data from them, and it's all stored contiguously. We define a color struct, which contains integer values for R, G, and B. And we define an image struct, which contains its own size in rows and columns, as well as a two-dimensional array of pixel values. 
This vector struct is used to hold a bunch of different colors so that we can find the most dominant color within any given 8x8 region within the image. We define a kernel. The kernel size is 3x3, three three, and the kernel is basically the thing which we are passing over the image when we perform the convolution. You can see that the highest value for the kernel occurs in the very center, and it tapers off as we go to the corners. And what that does is it basically causes our convolution to favor things that are more proximal to the pixel in which we're actually dealing with. We have some functions here, such as add color and get dominant color. We have read image, free image, process image, display, and comp sector. So we'll take a look at these functions now. First, we have a function called read image, which takes a const car pointer called file path, and it reads that file, which is a BMP file, into an image struct. And then we have free image, which takes an image and frees the data associated with it so we don't have memory leaks. We have a function called process image, which takes image data, a two-dimensional array, and a width and a height. And what it does is it slides an 8 by 8 window across the image. And at each section, it tries to find the closest ASCII character to the pixels within that section. And it does so by calling a helper function called comp sector. And comp sector takes two 8 by 8 arrays and compares them using convolution. It does so by sliding our 3 by 3 kernel across it, subtracting pixel values and multiplying by the weight at that kernel. As we call this function multiple times with different ASCII characters, the lowest scoring ASCII character is the best match for any given 8 by 8 sector. Once we have the best matching character, we call display, which attempts to color match the 8 by 8 image as best as possible. Because the size of a character is actually four by eight pixels, or it's two by one in aspect ratio, but the data within a character is eight by eight or one by one in aspect ratio, we have to do a little bit of extra math just to make sure that our colors match the original image as closely as possible. And we have this little helper function called print character, which takes a character and a color and just prints that character in that color. Quite simple. And then we have a file called basicvec.c, which is our vector implementation. It has a function called addColor, which allows us to add a color to the vector. If it's already there, we'll increment the count. If it's not there, we'll insert it. And then we have getDominantColor, which takes a vector and it returns the most common color within that vector. To compile the code, I have included a simple make file. If we open a terminal here and use the make command, our code should build. Alternatively, you could install GCC and simply type this command to compile the code into an executable named show. There are several guides on YouTube to install GCC on Windows that you could follow for this. After compiling, if we call show and pass in the path to our image, we can generate the ASCII art image. For example, here's a plane. Here's a car. Here's a mountain. And here's a Ferrari Formula One car. And that's it for this video of building an ASCII art generator. You can improve upon this by experimenting with different kernels and kernel sizes and using more sophisticated clustering algorithms to detect dominant colors in image segments. Let me know in the comments if you prefer this style where I write the code beforehand and go over it, or if you'd like me to implement the code from scratch in the video. The code will be available on my friend's GitHub, linked in the description down below. See you all in the next one.